Hey guys, Dr. Justin Feldman here from Feldman Physical Therapy and Performance, and we're going to talk about some heart rate monitors today. So we get a lot of questions asking us which is the best heart rate monitor for me, what's the best heart rate monitor on the market, and to be totally selfish, one of the main purposes of this video is so that we can point people to it when they email or send us a message through Facebook or other social media and are asking this question. So there are a ton of heart rate monitors on the market and the best one is really based off of your initial use case and what you're really looking to get out of it. So the first thing is a lot of your newer smartwatches or devices are going to come with a heart rate monitor on the back and those are slowly getting better but to be totally honest, the backside of your wrist is not the best place to get your heart rate. That's why when you're not feeling great, no EMT or doctor goes to the back of your wrist to get your heart rate. You look in here, you look up here. And so we're really, really not going to get the best reading from the back of our wrist. Those tend to be accurate for our normal daily life, but we're not going to pick up the changes you're looking for while you're working out. So for that, we really recommend either one of two things, either a chest strap based heart rate monitor, or there are multiple different optical heart rate monitors, not all that dissimilar to what you're going to have on the back of your watch, but that you would put on your arm, either putting it up on your forearm or I like to use mine sort of up on the uh, higher part of my upper arm, sort of inside there. Um, and that will get a pretty accurate reading. You will definitely not see as quick a change while using an optical device as using what's called an ECG device, which would basically be the strap for short. So we'll dive in here. We'll look at all of the differences between the ones on the market right now and we'll talk about where we'd like to see things maybe go with this and hopefully help you pick out the one that might be best for you. We'll try and go ahead and in the, the show notes sort of below in the, and, uh, in the comments, throw uh, links for the specific ones that we talk about. So we'll get those in there for you guys so that you can do it. But please, we'll put those down there. There'll be Amazon links. It'll be the easiest way for you to find it, compare reviews on your own. But if you're able to pick these things up from any of your local shops and, and any of that stuff, please go support one of your local retailers. You could use Amazon for all your research you want, um, but try, try and shop in your local community if you can do it. So let's dive right in. Okay, so first off, let's chat about some of these different straps and I forgot in the beginning, I'm supposed to do this, I'm not great at it, but please, if you find all this information useful, helpful, jump down below, hit that like button and uh, make sure you subscribe to our channel so that every time there's something new out, uh, you get that. Also, we throw a YouTube video up with each of our weekly blogs that cover anything you could think of uh, physical therapy, health, fitness wise. So you get notified about all that. And I think there's a little bell down there. You hit that, you'll get a notification when we throw something up. So definitely we appreciate all the support. Go ahead and do that. So we're going to start off talking about the optical devices here, and then we'll jump into the straps. Um, optical devices, there's basically right now three things on the market. Um, we've got Wahoo here with their ticker fit. Okay. We've got Polar with an OH1, and I honestly can't find mine, but there's uh, Skosh has what's called the Rhythm Plus, and I believe they actually just released uh, a couple of weeks ago at uh, CES a new version of that that hopefully will be significant improvement over the old one. The old one's been around for a bit, so hopefully we'll see some good stuff coming out of that too. Um, basically, we could kind of talk about the Wahoo and the Polar simultaneously here. Accuracy wise, they both tend to be 
pretty spot on. I don't see a huge difference in either one. Um, Polar, if you live in the Polar ecosystem and you use Polar watches and other pieces of Polar technology, then that might be an easy choice for you. Um, if not, Wahoo is great. Um, the prices will tend to fluctuate. Uh, both of these devices have been on the market for a little while, so you'll find sales and deals on them here and there. Both of these are going to be both Bluetooth and ANT Plus compatible and should connect to most fitness equipment in a gym um, or other environment outside of just your watch or your bike computer. Um, and they'll both connect to your phone and have dedicated apps designed to work with them. Um, the Polar tends to be just a teeny little bit smaller. Um, we'll see how well you guys can see this when I do this, but uh, it actually pops off here and this is the device. It's very small. It's about the size of a quarter. Okay. And that slides right into here. That's how you charge that. You pop that off. Um, for charging the Wahoo, the whole thing sits onto a charger and clicks in. Um, I've used this Polar OH1 a ton. I really like it. Um, I like the fit of it and the feel of it a little better. You can see the bands a little bit different. Um, accuracy wise, I don't see a huge difference with this off of the, the strap. Um, and so if you're somebody who the chest strap tends to bother, um, you get chafing issues or something, I would definitely recommend checking out the, uh, the OH one here. Um, benefit of the dual connection there, the Bluetooth and the ANT for anybody not familiar with it with ANT plus you are able to connect your device to multiple devices at once. So let's say you have a bike computer and a watch and you want to be sending your heart rate from your strap to both of them. You can do that using the ANT plus Bluetooth. We can only be connected to one Bluetooth device at a time. We'll talk about some of these other ones that kind of break that rule a little bit, but in general Bluetooth, we're going to connect to one device at a time. So uh, with the OH1, it's nice to be able to have both the Bluetooth and the ANT. So for example, if I'm using my Polar Grit X here and I want this to connect to that, but then I'm using a bike computer, I can connect to the bike computer through ANT Plus, but the Bluetooth will connect to my watch. So it's convenient to have that dual band. Um, also, if you're like me and like to run with multiple watches, then it's nice to be able to send the heart rate from the device to multiple other devices. Um, so that's our optical ones. Um, I, I say if you're somebody who has relied on the watch heart rate because you don't like the feel of a chest strap or it annoys you, then I would go to one of those optical ones um, and say, stop trusting what's on the back of your watch. One day they might come up and get a little better, but right now it's not something we want to base any big decisions on. Um, so next we have the uh, Wahoo Ticker X and this is a really good device, simple. Um, again, it's been around for a while and uh, Again, both Bluetooth and ANT on here, so you could connect to multiple devices at a time. This is really neat because it actually has memory. So it has onboard memory, so if you choose to work out with this and don't have your watch, your phone, anything with you, this will save all of their heart rate data. When you come back, you can connect it to their phone app and download all the data. So if you're working out in the gym or you're somebody who might do uh, kickboxing or a martial arts type sport where you can't have a watch on, but you can be wearing the chest strap. It's really, really convenient. Uh, it stores all the data and it will um, download it afterwards. Um, accuracy wise, again, spot on, no issues with it at all. Um, I will mention while we're talking about accuracy, so this is the Sunto specific uh, chest strap, came with my Sunto Barrow 9. Um, of all of these, this is the most comfortable strap that I have. Unfortunately, it is very unreliable and constantly unpairs with the device. Um, and it is Bluetooth only. Sunto really just relies on that Bluetooth technology. Um, so this is one that I would not recommend. Um, I hear that they're trying to change it, but right now this thing, it just keeps dropping and disconnecting from my watch, Sunto watch too. 
Um, I'm constantly having to repair it or mid run. It loses my heart rate. Um, I run into issues where in the middle of the run, my heart rate will jump way up and come back down. So um, I've tried a couple of the devices. I actually sent this back a couple times and kept happening. So definitely was not uh, an isolated thing. I think there might be a hardware issue with the here. Um, and so I would, would sort of steer away from that. Um, now, we'll talk a little bit here. So this is my Garmin HRM Run, and this is now officially outdated uh, because they now have the HRM Pro. So we'll use this as a stand-in, but we'll talk about the HRM Pro because I haven't gotten my hands on one yet um, because I just can't justify buying another heart rate strap for good reason. Um, but um, the HRM Pro is great. It will allow you to collect running data off of uh, your Garmin watch, um, whether it's cadence, um, vertical oscillations. It'll give you all sorts of fancy running metrics that you can choose to pay attention to or not. It also will give you cross-country skiing metrics. So if you're someone who enjoys cross-country skiing and you have a Garmin watch, that's a, a really good option. Um, and previously, Garmin had uh, the HRM Run, HRM Try, HRM Swim, um, and this HRM Pro basically takes the place of all of those. It is also dual band, and it also has a memory to save information if you happen to lose connection to your watch while you're doing it. So especially swimming wise, generally the device will uh, save all that information on it. And when you get out of the pool or the water, if you're doing a triathlon, it'll send it all. So when you look at your activity after on Garmin Connect, it looks like one smooth activity and you see all the heart rate in there. But during it, you're not gonna see a lot of it. Transmitting that stuff through the water gets tricky. And also, it's really hard to see while you're swimming. So stop looking at your watch while you're swimming um, and don't worry about it so much and just swim, enjoy. Uh, don't get eaten by a shark. Um, now, kind of leaving Garmin for a second and we'll go into Polar. So Polar has the uh, HR9, okay, and the 10 here, okay, uh, OH9, OH10. And so um, I really, really love my 10 here. Um, this is my go-to strap for everything. Um, I basically use this exclusively. Um, the nine is great. Um, we'll talk about the differences. Basically on the nine, okay, um, what you're gonna miss out on is that it's not gonna have memory. So the nine, um, it'll pair to your watch or your phone or whatever you're gonna use, but it doesn't have memory. So um, you'll miss out on anything that you um, happen without connection to something else. Um, the other thing is on the 10, what you get, definitely a little bit more expensive, but um, the 10 has these really nice little beads on the back of the band uh, that hold it in place. Um, and I find this stays perfectly stable, does not move on me, um, and is very comfortable. Uh, I've even forgotten to take it off after a run or a, a different type of workout. Um, this actually is able to transmit to a lot of devices. So not only does this have the ANT Plus and the Bluetooth, like the 9, this will actually transmit to two Bluetooth devices, Bluetooth smart devices, at the same time. So uh, if you happen to be running with a Polar watch that uses only Bluetooth smart and um, a Suunto watch that uses only Bluetooth smart, or your bike computer, um, or anything like that that you can think of, um, this will be able to transmit to all of those devices. So um, it will also pair because it has that common signal that gym equipment uses and send your heart rate to most fitness and gym equipment. Uh, so for me, um, if I wanted to pair this, it will send a signal to my Peloton. It will send a signal to my Polar Watch, my Garmin Watch, all at the same time. Um, and so if you happen to live in a bunch of different ecosystems and record a whole bunch of different data and send it all to different places, um, this is a great device for you. I've paired it with everything from my phone, my Apple Watch, the Peloton, to my uh, Concept2 behind me here. Um, and this uh, sends a reliable, consistent signal to all of them. 
um, even all at the same time. So um, this is my number one recommendation. Um, I really, really um, recommend it to pretty much anybody who asks. It is definitely not the least expensive strap on the table here, but um, it is my favorite and is most reliable. Um, so I, uh, that's the one, the Polar HR10. Uh, I really, really uh, like it. And the biggest thing for me with it is that it just works. Nothing is worse than going out for a run or a bike ride and constantly fidgeting with the strap or trying to lick the sensors um, and get a better connection. I wet those once, put it on, it connects to each device that I'm using every time, sends a reliable signal, um, and it just works. And so for these sort of things, that's really what we're looking for is something that you don't have to think about and you don't have to worry about. So that is my chat on heart rate monitors. If there's one we didn't cover, something else you'd like to see, any questions you have, go ahead, throw it down in the comments. Uh, if you found a mistake that I made, because I'm sure I made one, throw that down in the comments as well. Um, and we look forward to seeing everybody soon.